Good morning, everyone. My name is Gina Ford. I am the communications director for Prince George's County Executive Angela Also Brooks. Um, we are here this morning because, of course, yesterday evening we were um, notified of our first confirmed COVID-19 case in Prince George's County. I will tell you that here in the last several minutes there have been new developments. So I will bring up County Executive Angela Also Brooks, followed by Prince George's County Health Officer Dr. Ernest Carter, followed by Office of Emergency Management Director Ronnie Gill, and finally, Mr. Barry Stanton, who's representing Prince George's County Public Schools. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, we thank you so much for coming out to join us this morning as we share some updates uh, with our community regarding the novel coronavirus uh, known as COVID-19. First, I want to thank uh, everyone throughout our county government who has been working really diligently to prepare us uh, for the eventuality that we would have our first case. We always knew that it was not a matter of whether we would have our first case, but, uh, but instead when. Uh, and so it is here, and I want to thank them uh, for working diligently over the last month to prepare us for today. Uh, I'd also like to thank all of our residents uh, for their patience and understanding as we have gathered the information uh, to present to them this morning. We wanted to make sure that whatever information we shared uh, was the most accurate and up-to-date information that we had. And I want to thank each of them as well for doing their part uh, today and moving forward to prevent this respiratory illness from continuing to spread across our community. Um, I am really honored this morning to be joined um, by a number of our county agency directors. I want to thank them uh, for being here. I also would like to thank and acknowledge my county council colleagues uh, who are here and who have been uh, fantastic partners to us. Uh, in particular, I'd like to thank uh, Chair Todd Turner, who is standing uh, with us today, and to acknowledge those who are joining me here up front, including Major Riddick, who is our chief administrative officer, uh, Dr. Ernest Carter, who is our chief Chief Health Officer uh, for our Health Department and who you will hear from this morning, uh, Ronnie Gill, Director of our Office of Emergency Management, Barry Stanton, our Chief Operating Officer uh, for our public school system who is standing in on behalf of Dr. Monica Golson, who uh, was not able to be here this morning, but we have been in regular conversation and contact with her and will continue to do so. Last night, the Maryland Department of Health State Laboratory confirmed that a Prince George's County resident in her 50s has tested positive for the novel coronavirus, uh, COVID-19. This individual contracted the virus during a trip to Boston during the dates of February 25th through 27th. We were just alerted to this positive case at about six o'clock last night. Uh, so you will understand that we are therefore uh, still conducting a significant investigation to determine further exposure within the county. Uh, you also heard a moment ago uh, from our communications director that we were alerted probably 10 minutes ago uh, that there are two additional positive cases in Prince George's County. Uh, this is a couple who traveled internationally and came back from a cruise, uh, but they tested positive as well and we just received that information about 10 minutes ago. What we know right now regarding the first individual is that she is at home. Uh, she is in good condition after receiving medical treatment. She was never in contact with any school children, does not have children in our school system. Uh, she likewise did not attend church here in Prince George's County. And her family members that live with her are also self-quarantined in the home and are in good condition. Uh, I know preliminarily, although we, again, have not had an opportunity to conduct the investigation on the couple that we just learned about, um, but I do have information that they are likewise at home as we speak, uh, that they are uh, self-quarantined and that they are in good condition. We also know that our residents are deeply concerned uh, about this virus and about an expo recent exposure at National Harbor between the dates of February 27th to March 1st at the Gaylord, uh, where an individual tested positive for COVID-19 uh, after returning to their home state of New Jersey following the Conservative Political Action Conference. Uh, you should know that that investigation is being led by the state of New Jersey in conjunction with the state of Maryland, uh, and we will continue to share information as we have it. Uh, anyone who attended or worked this conference may be at risk of exposure, according to, to the Maryland Department of Health. 
Uh, I want you to know that our chief health officer, as well as our health department, did make a site visit yesterday to meet with employees uh, to share information and resources, ensuring that any county resident who may have been attending or working this conference uh, are taking the necessary precautions. What we want to do today is to assure Prince Georgians that we are monitoring the rapidly evolving situation surrounding COVID-19. Uh, we are going to continue to do so in a way that is open and transparent. And we want to share and we'll continue to share the latest updates with our community on what your county government has been doing in conjunction with our partners on the council and other electeds to prepare for this COVID-19 virus. The Prince George's County government has coordinated uh, efforts among all agencies to address COVID-19. Uh, this effort to this point has been spearheaded by our health department. Our county health department is also in constant and regular contact with our state and federal public health partners and receiving the latest updates so we can continue to take the appropriate steps necessary to keep Prince Georgians safe and healthy. On March 4th, Prior to any confirmed positive cases in the state of Maryland, we decided to activate both our emergency operations center, our joint information center at an, at an enhanced level. Uh, we have had staff working around the clock to monitor updates on this situation. Uh, we have maintained the same level of activation since the first confirmed cases in the state of Maryland were announced last week. And since the most recent announcement that there may have been exposure risk at the recent CPAC event at National Harbor. In response to the first positive case in Prince George's County, today I am raising the level of our emergency operations center and joint information center from enhanced to a partial activation. Uh, what this does is to release additional resources, uh, brings to bear uh, a number of additional county employees who will be working around the clock to further collaborate and ensure that, ensure that all necessary steps are being taken to prevent the spread of germs uh, and this respiratory illness like uh, the COVID. Our Office of Central Services is working with the Office of Emergency Management to quickly obtain essential items ranging from sanitizing supplies and cleaners to protective clothing and equipment. Additionally, OCS intends to make full use of its 1,000, 100,000 square foot warehouse uh, for stocking, inventory, and fast delivery of essential items and supplies. Our, our Office of Central Services is also instructing the county's custodial staff to incorporate cleaners that are EPA registered antimicrobial products for use against COVID-19 into our existing daily routine cleaning of all of our county government buildings and we will continue to do this. Uh, this will include placement of hand sanitizing dispensers throughout the common areas of our government buildings to ensure that our employees and residents who visit our buildings are safe. Our Department of Family Services has been in close contact with our senior centers. As you know, we are uh, very concerned uh, about our seniors and others who may have uh, chronic medical conditions. Uh, so we've been working with our nursing facilities across the county. They have implemented the Centers for Disease Control guidelines to ensure that our seniors remain safe and healthy and are following flu and virus prevention protocols to ensure facilities are thoroughly clean and disinfected. And more specifically, for our seniors who aren't in nursing facilities, many of whom, as we know, may not have access or knowledge of, in, of the internet. Many of our seniors likewise do not have smartphones. And so we have been working to get information uh, out to them via hand delivery. We've actually been taking around that information to those facilities, including a fact sheet on the coronavirus that has gone to all senior nutrition sites to be passed out. And it's also being included with meal deliveries to homebound seniors uh, this week. This fact sheet has also gone out to all of our senior apartment facilities to be distributed by hand to all residents. The Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission, Department of Parks and Recreation of Prince George's County also continues to monitor its facilities because we know many of our residents use those facilities, uh, but they've been monitoring them to ensure that supplies are on hand and that they are properly cleaned. At this time, the department's programs and services will continue on a regular schedule. Our fire and EMS department has already confirmed as well that they have enough personal protection equipment for all of their employees. And we are working with our police department to ensure the proper equipment is available for all officers as well. 
We also have new procedures in place with public safety communications uh, to screen symptoms via phone and guidelines in place as well to ensure that staff responding uh, to any of these emergencies can take appropriate precautions if the resident has signs or symptoms of COVID-19. Our Department of Public Works and Transportation, uh, as of this moment, has not canceled or modified any transportation services at this time. And so we want that to be known by our residents that transportation services will continue as usual, uh, but they are ensuring that universal precautions for infection control are being included in the daily cleaning of our county's bus system, the bus. Our buses will now be cleaned at a minimum twice a day. Uh, the Department of Public Works and Transportation is also preparing contingency plans for alternative modes of transportation uh, for many of our vulnerable populations in our county. Uh, we want to ensure, for example, that those who are receiving dialysis treatments will be able to continue that no matter what happens with transportation. We have alternative plans to make sure those individual patients can be transported uh, for their treatments. For our government employees, uh, I want you to know that our Office of Human Resources Management has been working around the clock to ensure that where appropriate telework will be uh, able to be used. We also uh, want to reduce the number of staff in the workplace. In addition, the county government will be sending all of its employees information that will be helpful to them at this time. We will continue to communicate with them. In regards to events, we are reviewing all of our upcoming major events and making a determination about whether or not to postpone these events, and we will be doing this on a case-by-case -case basis. Today, uh, and it gives me great sadness to do this, but I am announcing my decision to postpone our Women's History Month luncheon uh, that is scheduled for March 26th. Uh, we are also postponing our census block party, which is scheduled for March 28th. We are doing this uh, out of an abundance of caution and we'll provide further updates to the community when we have new dates for these events, uh, as well as, as we make decisions uh, regarding other events that we may need to postpone. Finally, we have produced a number of fact sheets and infographics uh, discussing the coronavirus and several easy everyday actions that we want residents to take to prevent the spread of germs. These actions include please wash your hands as often as possible with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Uh, if soap and water are not available, we ask people to please use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol. Please cover your coughs and sneezes with a tissue or use your elbow. Uh, avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects and surfaces and avoid close contact with people who are sick. And if you are sick, please, please stay home, except to get medical care. These fact sheets with information have been distributed to all of our county agencies who are consistently posting those materials on social media. We are also, because again, there are many of our residents who do not have access, access to social media, we are bringing those flyers to community events and also sharing them with community partners like our senior centers and our libraries. According to the Center on Disease Control, some residents are more at risk of potentially contracting COVID-19, such as our seniors and those who have chronic medical conditions like heart, lung, and kidney disease. We advise those individuals to please take precautions, uh, including staying at home as much as possible and away from high traffic areas when in public, Please avoid contact with those who are sick and wash your hands often and have access also to several weeks of medications and supplies. We ask our partners in the media uh, and we thank you in advance also for helping us to share these resources with Prince Georgians to ensure that this information is reaching everyone. We ask Prince Georgians to stay informed. You can do this by calling our hotline uh, this number we know will be uh, posted, we hope, uh, as we air here. But call our hotline at 301-883-6627. Again, that is 301-883-6627. Uh, you may also visit our website at health.mypgc.us backslash corona, C-O-R-O-N-A, virus. And also you may follow us on social media at CEX also Brooks. In addition, we are printing this information and trying to distribute it to as many residents as possible. 
Uh, and I want to make a point about 911. We are please, please, please asking our residents to only utilize 911 for emergencies. Uh, we have two other modes to contact us if you have general questions or concerns about the coronavirus. You can call our hotline, uh, again, 301-883-6627. Uh, you may also dial 211 to get information about the coronavirus, but please do not overload 911 unless it is an emergency. Staying informed is absolutely critical, uh, as misinformation about COVID-19 can create fear and hostility that hurts people and makes it harder to keep everyone healthy. That's why we are working to make all of these resources, information, and updates available to our residents in as many ways as possible. Uh, we have translated, for example, much of this information into Spanish, French, uh, and, and Vietnamese, uh, because we want to be able to communicate uh, with every aspect of our community, and we ask you to please help us to make sure that that happens. Again, what you should know today is that the county uh, our government and all of our partners are doing everything we can to respond to this rapidly evolving situation. The health and safety of every Prince Georgian is our top priority, and we will continue to take the appropriate steps and provide the latest updates to protect the well-being of all of our residents. This is a concerning challenge for Prince Georgians, uh, but by working together, we are fully prepared and we are well equipped to handle this situation. So thank you so much, uh, and I'd like to turn over now um, to Dr. Yes, Dr. Ernest Carter. Dr. Ernest Carter, our Chief Health Officer. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And thank you for coming. Right now, the Health Department is working closely with the state to investigate Prince George's County's first concern, confirmed COVID-19 case, as well as the two additional ones we just found out about. We're pleased the patients are doing well at this time. They're at home. And, and they have family members who are doing well also, at least for the first case that we've started our investigation on. This investigation is a contact tracing investigation, and that means right now we're gathering information from the patient to help us determine the exposure risk. And that allows us to understand how other people have been exposed, and we figure out from the very beginning who got exposed and what we need to do to help them move forward. Prince George's County is prepared and ready to do everything we can to keep residents as healthy as possible. Myself and my staff are receiving updates and guidance from the state and the CDC, and we're also communicating to other counties. We're, we're closely monitoring and sharing information about preparations, prevention, response updates, and additional cases. At this time, this remains an evolving situation. Guidance from science, and public health experts will continue to change, and that's important for you all to understand, and we will adjust as that change, as we come, become more aware of the change. As that happens, we will be here to update you on the facts and the best advice to keep you healthy. Coronavirus spreads person to person, primarily through coughing and sneezing. Patients have reported that it takes anywhere from two to 14 days to start feeling symptoms after exposure. As, as, as has been previously said, these symptoms are fever, which is higher than 100.4, a cough, and difficulty breathing. If you develop these symptoms and if you have concerns, you have been in close contact with a person known to have COVID-19, seek medical care. We can all do our part to contain the virus. Strong public health measures now can help reduce the impact of this virus. Wash your hands often, soap and water, 20 seconds at least. If you don't have good soap, some people don't, use hand sanitizer. And if you don't have hand sanitizer, use at least a solution that has 60% alcohol. Cover your mouth when you're coughing and sneezing. Try to keep your hand out of your face if you can and touching your face. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. If you are sick, stay at home and only go out if you have to go to the doctor. The risk of most Prince Georgians getting sick is still very low. But as you see, our cases are increasing. 
Our public health experts, along with emergency management officials, are continually working closely with the state and federal health officials to respond and plan as needed as the situation changes. Among those recent changes was a specific alert for those at higher risk for getting sick from the virus. Higher risk people are older adults and people who have severe chronic medical conditions like, like conditions in your lung or your heart or your kidney or if you're immune suppressed. So the CDC recommends that these groups stay at home as much as you can. Avoid low at large crowds. When you go out in public, keep away from others who are sick. Limit close contact and wash your hands often. Make sure you have access to several weeks of medication and supplies in case you need to stay at home for a prolonged period of time. I also want to make sure you stay updated on the CDC travel guidelines, and they're changing. So you really have to go to the sites. The CDC sites have a lot of great information. Keep updated on these things. Over the weekend, the CDC announced that it does not recommend people go on cruise ships. In the future, they may recommend that older people don't take airline trips. We want to stay updated with their recommendations. We're updating the public as new information becomes available. The health department has set up a dedicated coronavirus web page. It has the latest information and resources. The web page is, and I will repeat what the county exec said, health.mypgc.us backslash coronavirus. We have also set up a hotline, as, um, as the county exec also said, it's 301-883-6627. We ask that people, and I'm repeating this, do not call 911 unless you have an emergency. We have set up these lines. We have experts who can help guide you to where you need to get the best information if we can't give it to you right there on the phone. Please go to our website. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Carter. Next, we'll have Ronnie Gill, Director of the Office of Emergency Management. Thank you and good morning. Good morning, good morning. At 10 a.m. this morning, the Emergency Operations Center's posture changed from an enhanced level to a partial activation. At this level, the EOC now serves as the centralized location where public safety, health, social services, and other county agencies, along with our nonprofits, volunteer organizations, educational and faith-based partners, will work together to monitor and coordinate COVID-19 planning, support, response, and recovery efforts. In addition, we will be providing guidance and assistance to all of our municipal partners, our businesses, our residents, and visitors, including seniors and all of our vulnerable populations. We will continue to maintain the functions, roles, and responsibilities that we had at the enhanced level but we will increase our coordination, planning, and response efforts with the staffing from selected a, uh, agencies. Some of these agencies are the Fire Department, Department of Family Services, Department of Social Services, our Office of Community Relations, our Information and Technology Office. These folks will come together so whenever we're working on a problem, we're able to determine that solution. We will also be working to maintain situational awareness, information sharing, and coordination with our federal, state, regional, and municipal partners. Our Joint Information Center was activated, as stated, on March 4th, and our county public information officers will continue to work in collaboration, keeping both the employees, residents, businesses, and visitors informed with accurate, consistent, and timely messages regarding COVID-19. As mentioned uh, by the two previous speakers, additionally, the Health Department's call center was transferred to the Emergency Operations Center uh, due to the heightened level of concern and questioning they would receive. The call number again is 301-883-6627. Our main objective is, will be to continually co collect evaluate and disseminate COVID-19 information to county and state agencies, our military partners, and our federal agencies. 
Lastly, as we continue to prepare and respond to COVID-19, I encourage each and every resident to sign up and utilize our emergency notification system. You can do that at alert.mypgc.us. Thank you. And then now finally, we will have uh, Mr. Barry Stanton from PGCPS. Good morning. Good morning. Like everyone gathered here, there is concern and some anxiety in the Prince George's County Public Schools community over the unknown. I am here today to shed some light about what we, what we do know and what we can say about our coronavirus preparation. We have stood up our own incident command team and have daily briefings with Dr. Golson and the executive team to ensure coordination and resource deployment. We have three primary areas of focus, keeping schools and offices setting safe, preventing the spread of respiratory viruses, and sharing information as broadly as possible. So keeping schools safe, the health and well-being of our students and employees is our highest priority. We are monitoring daily attendance and conducting thorough cleaning of frequently, frequently used surfaces and areas in our schools, office buildings, and our buses. Our buildings and maintenance team is working hard to keep restrooms and all our facilities stocked with hand soap, paper towels, and sanitizers. We have additional soap and hand sanitizers on order to make sure that we maintain adequate supplies in our schools. As a precaution, we have canceled all school system sponsored international travel until further notice. We are also monitoring out of state travel, generally following the guidance of those states in terms of any restrictions on their own residents. We continue to encourage students, families, and employees to take everyday preventive steps to help slow the spread of respiratory illness like colds, flus, and the virus. This week, we are driving home that message in our schools by designating specific times of the day for young children to wash their hands and frequently reminding older students to do the same. The most important message that we want to send to parents is to please keep their children at home if they are ill. Please keep your children home if you, they are ill. We sent an e-blast yesterday to let everyone know that we will excuse health-related absences without a doctor's note. So we want you to stay informed. With so much uncertainty and misinformation out there, we also want parents to know where they can go and get accurate, clear, and comprehensive information. There's a designated site with the Corona's information and resources on the PGCPS website. It's updated daily. We are sending e-blasts a few times a week to the PGCPS community and parents. This is a great time to make sure that we have your current phone number and emergency contact information. Yes, we are obviously concerned about families from underrepresented groups, and we will be working with our parent liaison and community partners to reach out. Lastly, I want to thank the county executive, also Brooks, for helping the school system continue to communicate with the county and the community. My former DCO colleagues, I want to thank you for your support and the entire county government for their outstanding coordination and the collaborative approach we have taken to ensure we keep our residents, our families, 
and most importantly, our students safe as we address this virus together. Thank you very much. All right, now with that, we will take any questions. That's true. Could you reflect on that for us, please? Are tests available in your county uh, in the volume that you feel is necessary? Yes. I think it is in the volume that's necessary. Our physicians have been very well informed. As a matter of fact, even before our first case, we've, uh, our, we, the state has been able to send out the appropriate protocols for knowing when to test for the virus. Now, one thing you have to be very clear about this vi you could have the flu and not have the coronavirus. You could have some other viral illness. It's a lot of viral illnesses. And so you want to be sure that a medical professional differentiates you from those and what could be corona. When their suspicion is high enough and we have, they have guidelines, then they'll send you for testing. So right now, we feel very confident we have all the tests with, that we need for right now. And We've been working in conjunction with the state of Maryland, and they have been working with the federal government to make sure we have it for the future. Could you tell me how many tests have been done within the boundaries of Prince Julius County? I can't. That's, it's, almost, it's impossible. Because one thing that occurred was the state allows labs that are not the state labs to be able to do the test. And when they do those tests, they don't report that to the health department. They don't report it to the state. They report it to the state, but when they become positive, that's when we find out about it. So we don't know how many tests are out there. We do know that when they, when they become positive. I want to clarification. You said seek medical help, which is a very clear statement by you. Should people be going to emergency care centers or family doctors? Should they be making phone calls to prevent spreading things around? How would you characterize that? For seek medical care? Yeah. The, I would say you seek medical care like you seek medical care right now. If you go to your doctor, if you have a primary care physician, go there. If you go to a federally qualified health center, go there. If you even go to the, um, you know, in these pharmacies, they have the minute clinics. You can go to a minute clinic. Go to where a professional is, a medical professional, and seek that care. Yes, I can tell you right now, if we have to consider closing school, obviously we're going to work with our health department and our federal partners and, and the CDC to make sure we understand all the guidelines to do that. If we have a particular outbreak or a student, obviously we want that student and family to quarantine. But right now we're going to work with the health department, our federal partners, and make that decision as quickly as possible. We, we, we're looking at remote, uh, as far as remote type of teaching for our students. We're in the process of working with our IT department now to look at that. So we're looking at all those particular options right now. You know, I'm not prepared to answer that question on what the University of Maryland does. But obviously, if we have students that are going to, for example, the community college, we're going to deal with that particular process and deal with the attendance of that process. So right now, until we hear what the details of what the University of Maryland is doing, we're going to take things on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay, I'll, I'll let Dr. Carter talk a bit about that, but I can tell you that what went into making the decision regarding the Women's History Month luncheon is that is an event that generally does attract a large senior population and really just out of an abundance of caution, uh, it also attracts, uh, so it's a larger and older, generally an older group of people who come there. We have uh, probably 1,300, 1,500 uh, people who usually attend the Women's History Month luncheon, and so out of an abundance of caution, uh, and out of concern for what we were seeing, we decided to postpone that event. 
Um, but in terms of what the State Health Department and the Centers for Disease Control, I'll let Dr. Carter talk a little bit more about that. Well, basically, we, there is a distance. There's a six feet distance that you should be from somebody if somebody has active disease. That's, you should be six feet away from them. Now, we don't, because we don't know who has active disease, we don't want to just make, start telling everybody to be six feet away. You know, during the flu season, you should, that's the same, that it's actually the same criteria. So right now, we have to take these things on a case-by-case -case basis. And we're going to be, we're going to err on the side of caution. Um, and so I want to be sure you all understand that. We're going to take this on a case-by-case -case basis, and I think we're asking the public to do that too. And if you have a question, call our hotline, and we are very much willing to discuss whether you should close or not your, um, your event. I did want to go back to the other question, because I don't think I answered what you were saying. I, if you need, when you call the doctor, you need to call the doctor before you go see the doctor. Because if you call the doctor before, they'll make a space, just in case you have coronavirus, they'll make a space in their office for you, as opposed to you mingling within the office. So it's very important that if you call your doctor to be seen because you feel that you're a possible case, then you should call before you go. And I'm sorry, I, I just, I, maybe I just didn't hear you, but I want to be sure I made that point. Right. So your specific advice to those people who are feeling some sort of symptoms, still flu season, what precisely should they be doing? If, if a person is sick, first they shouldn't go to work. They should call their health provider. And their health provider at this point should see them to make sure that they don't have, they don't meet the criteria. And then that health provider has to assure them that A, they don't meet the criteria so they don't need to be tested. And that hap I'm, I'm sure this is happening a lot because the f providers that I've talked to are getting overwhelmed with calls. And so they, I can understand why they say, I don't want everybody to come in because I think you're okay, because they've dealt with this before. However, if a person has a certain anxiety around the fact that they might have it, that doctor should see that patient. Then reassure them if they don't, that if they, in their judgment they don't have the virus, they need to reassure them that they don't need the test. That's the most important thing, and that's on the provider. We can't make the providers do that, but that's what the providers should do. We don't have the information, New Jersey does. New Jersey has all that information. And in their investigation, if there is a, if there's a role for our health department to play, they inform us of that. If not, then they inform those jurisdictions that have those active cases. So they will basically go and interview that person, find out every place they went and then in the possibility that they may have been there, then they do an investigation. Then they determine whether or not who this person came in contact with and what they need to do with that particular person. If it involved our health department, our, any of our citizens that we needed to do an investigation on, they would contact us and we would do that investigation. I would not in this forum reveal who those people were or anything. But they would, we would do the investigation, we would take the appropriate steps, and then inform them and go up the chain to the state and then up back to New Jersey. You reported two additional cases just now at the press conference. The governor's communication director tweeted that the state's official tally stands at 6 and that they are still working through the process of confirmation for those other two cases. Right. So why did you report that? Now, are you, are you confident we didn't have those two additional cases? Yes. We, we, they, that would, so you just went through the public information channel. We get it a little faster than them. So we know that there we have those two additional cases. I'll let Ronnie answer that. 
We've been in contact with all of our federal partners. Uh, immediately following this call, we have calls scheduled with other elected officials. We have calls scheduled with our higher education institutions, as well as Andrews and NASA. So we work with all of our partners. Most of them have EM directors, and we work directly with them on what we're doing in the county. So, so what we expect is we expect for, this is a virus and we expect it to spread. Um, the reason that this press conference is very important to us is because we believe that the public has a role in helping us to prevent it from spreading. Viruses spread, the flu spreads, but we have in our community the power to prevent it from spreading by following the recommendations that we shared this morning um, regarding if you are sick, stay home be that from work, school, church, whatever it is to stay home, asking people to wash their hands, to really put all the precautions in place. Um, we don't know how far it will go. We hope that we are able to contain this very soon, but we can't say with any certainty, but what we can say is that virus is spread and that the public can assist us in helping us to prevent it from spreading any further. And Dr. Carter, was there something additional? No, I, I think you, you said it eloquently, oh, okay. but, 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 <laughs> but I didn't want to say, you know, this, is, uh, this is epidemiology. This is how viruses spread. It, and if you look back 10 days ago and look at now, you can see there's an exponential rise. So it's going, to, we're going to have more cases. And, and if you know the history of viruses, you know that when a new virus comes out, it's not like an old virus. An old virus is sort of seasonal but new viruses can last for a year or so. So we have no idea right now. We can't say with certainty. But we are, like I said in my presentation, we're following the science, because that's where the information lies. And we're talking to the folks up at the CDC if we need to, and following their guidelines. And so we will keep you informed, and be sure we will, to be sure, we, only, we know that this is an evolving situation, so we will keep you informed. And that's as much as we can tell you at this time. We have in this county, and I'm happy to say, some of the largest and most well-equipped hospital systems in the country, between the University of Maryland, the, um, Advent the Washington Adventist System, the Adventist System, MedStar, Luminous Health, and we feel very confident we have the capacity. And one of the things that we have to do in preparedness is to see whether if we had a tremendous surge in cases, could the hospitals handle it? And we feel very confident they, they do. That's what our emergency preparedness does. We do that in conjunction with the state. So I think we, I think we can safely say we're okay. I can't tell you that at this time. She, I can't. I can't really reveal that information at this time. But as the information becomes more available, I will be able to do it. Where, when, and where she was tested? I, oh, the couple. The couple was was tested here. It was tested here in 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 the county. No, not necessarily hospital. They were tested here. Well, the couple who was the Nile couple came on a cruise ship. Right, but then the, the woman flying, flying from Boston to London, isn't that? I don't know. No. I, don't, I don't know right now. I'm sure there's information, but I don't know. Doctor, you mentioned the people that they want to stay home. They feel sick. But people, people can't afford to do that. What do you say to them? Oh, well, can't afford to stay home? Right. Well, we ask, what we ask them to do is to be sure they inform, call the health department. Because if they can't afford to, we're going to have to work with them. 
we, can, we, can't, we, can't, uh, we can't allow them to go to work if we think it's going to ultimately spread the virus. So we have information. I'll, I'll speak to that. Okay, yeah. okay, I'm sorry. So I'm we, sorry. we actually, we have been uh, working diligently with Sean Stokes, who is here from the Office of Human Resource Management. Um, and Sean, if you can come up for a moment, we've actually been uh, preparing for this. We know that this creates a hardship uh, for many of our residents. And so we are working to revise all of our policies around sick leave. Uh, we're asking again people to um, to work from home uh, where, where necessary. Um, Sean, if you want to come up for a moment and discuss some of how we've prepared, but we absolutely understand uh, that this does cause a hardship for, for many of our residents. Good morning or good afternoon, I'm not sure. Good morning still, <clears throat> almost. So um, we have uh, activated a relaxed telework uh, policy so that um, we're able to allow uh, those employees who normally would come to work every day to work from home. Um, so we are actually in the process of sending out something to uh, the entire workforce as well as our agency directors, just basically advising them um, to um, you know, take an inventory of those employees who are in what I would say more of a confined space um, to minimize risk. Um, and if we have the ability to allow folks to work from home, again paid, um, we will do that. So we'll see. Well, you know, we certainly hope that uh, nobody will be discouraged from participating in the census. You're right. We have so much at stake. Uh, this county lost $363 million in the last census count because we were uh, considered hard to count. We were the most undercounted jurisdiction in the state of Maryland. Um, that census can be completed online. It does not require you to be in the presence of any person. Uh, so that information is critically important. We thank you for asking it this morning. And we have been out and about in this community. This is not the first time. So the block party was one of several. Uh, we've had any number of events for nearly the last year uh, that we have been working on this. So we've been working on this about a year. Uh, we've been in our communities. We've hosted those block parties. We've been bingo with seniors. We've done a number of activities to get the word out. But thank you for reminding us that we do need everyone uh, because we have many federally uh, um, programs, federally funded programs that Medicare, for example, uh, school lunches for our children. There are so many federally funded programs that this census count um, relies on. So we still need people to be really attentive to this, that they should fill out the census. We are, yes, yeah, so we are canceling those uh, public events regarding the, um, the census count for now. We, we, we will report those cases relating to Prince George's County um, through our health department. And so they please feel free to utilize our, the website. We set up a special website regarding COVID-19 for the county. And we will continue to update that particular site with uh, information as we have it relating to the numbers of cases and the other information that we're able to share. So feel free uh, to continue to consult with our, um, with our website and to call again, if they have any questions, anyone who has any questions, please don't hesitate also to use the number that was given out today um, to, to answer those questions as well. And so Tracy, I'll also mention that uh, in those terms, the county government website, and you'll see that we have a special landing page there. Everything that's there takes you to the health department. And so on the county government homepage also, you can find easy access and on every single government page to take you to the health department website as well. And I'm reminded by Betty Hewlett, who is leading our account effort through Maryland National Capital Parking Planning, that you can literally call also to complete your census count. So call, go online. Uh, it does not require you to come out of your home to, com to participate in the count. So what it means is that we had a number of employees who were working at the hotels, for example, uh, and those are the individuals that our chief health officer uh, went to visit and the health department to give information about um, monitoring themselves, making sure that as they have, uh, and if they had any symptoms, what to do in that case, uh, and taking the precautions we mentioned here, um, sh washing hands and those kinds of things. But that's what we mean when we talked about employees, is the employees 
who were at the site of the CPAC conference. That's who we're talking about. So these are people that if they have symptoms, um, Dr. Carter. Yeah, I will tell you, they, they should take their temperature twice a day. They, they should, and if they should have a fee temperature, then they should call their physician and notify us and, and the physician should see them. So if they started to develop symptoms, same thing. They should call their physician, notify us, stay at home. No, 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 no quarantine unless they start having symptoms, and especially if they have a fever. Right, that's the only place. That's the only place that, that the, in the, so let me just, let me be clear. So the investigation goes from New Jersey to the state. So the state contacted us and said, this is where you should look. And, and there were, and then Gaylord was one place, and then there's another hotel. And we focused our effort there. And I also want to mention that we had, the chief is here, he can speak to it as well, but we had 350 police officers when we talk about employees. Uh, who were also on site, and there, and we've taken special efforts to um, to make sure that we have uh, spoken to those officers. And Chief, if you want to make some, give some information about that. Certainly, thank you, Ms. Olson Brooks. Let me be clear at the beginning of this, ladies and gentlemen in community. Your entire government is listening attentively, and acting deliberately on your behalf. There were 353 Prince George's County police officers detailed to the CPAC conference to handle traffic, to prevent disorder, to keep you safe. We have personally contacted every one of those officers. No one is presenting any symptoms associated with this virus. My partner in this, Chief Green, has likewise looked into the members of her fire EMS department. No one is presenting symptoms there. And we've talked to our community partners and other partners. And again, we have no reason to believe that there's been a coronavirus transmission associated with that. We are acting deliberately and methodically we have made provisions for the safety of your officers, and I promise you this, we will take every step to protect your police officers so that regardless of what presents itself associated with this or anything else, your police officers will be there to protect you. Thank you. Is there a plan in place should a case arise up in the prison system, for example, that has been talked about? Yes, yeah, so, so Director McDonough can speak to that. At the jail, we've been planning for several weeks on how to deal with this. Uh, the flu season in jails is all, can always be bad, so we've actually just uh, stepped up on the things that we normally do during flu season to encourage hand washing, cleaning, all of these things. Um, we do that every, every flu season, uh, stress to our employees that they get the flu shot stress to, well, actually give our inmates that have any compromised uh, health conditions that they get the um, flu shot, and we're making sure that uh, we're ready if the uh, flu, do, if the virus does uh, present in the jail. So. So we're actually conducting a call uh, following this press conference uh, with a faith community. Um, so they're one of our partners and we'll continue to communicate with them and give them advice and guidance that we will take from the Centers on Disease Control, um, as well as the local, our health department and the state health department. So we will pass along uh, that information. But of course, again, it will be based on science. Um, but the faith community, as you know, Prince George's County has a very large and active faith community, 800 churches here. So it is very important to us that we continue to, um, that we will communicate with the leadership of those churches and make sure that we are taking precautions to keep uh, all of the parishioners safe as well. But they will be on an active phone call, um, many of them with the government today, and then we'll continue to include them going forward. So any further questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.